So you've all heard of AHA. You've all heard of Blondie. But how many of you have heard of Vanessa? 20 years before Vanessa Carlton, there was Vanessa, the former model who sang in a mysterious, hushed voice and really dug barbells. Vanessa was a superstar in the Netherlands, where gossip columns tracked her whereabouts and fans tried to collect pieces of her hair. After all, she was a ball of positive energy who made some undeniably catchy synth pop. Come on, all you metalheads. Don't deny it. But outside of Europe, nothing. Not a single record was released in North America. Not a single interview was conducted. So who was this Vanessa? And more broadly, how did the two sides of the Atlantic shift so dramatically to the point where even a blonde model with perfect English wouldn't be touched by the American music industry with a 10-foot pole? Let's dive in. Disco in the 80s was a dead man walking. At least if you were in the United States. In 1979, over half the chart was disco singles. But all it took was one chubby kid wearing fatigues at a baseball park. And suddenly, disco was nowhere to be seen. Well, except for Europe. In Europe, disco never died. In fact, it was evolving. Even before the fateful disco demolition, Europe was responsible for its own disco sound. One that was a lot less funk and a lot more electronic. In fact, it was this man, Giorgio Moroder, an Italian living in Germany, who probably had the biggest impact on Eurodisco as well as the genre that would become known as EDM. Working alongside British-born musician Pete Bellotti, they pioneered a fully electronic form of disco, including the Donna Summer hit, I Feel Love. As well as Giorgio's own records. Now, when I overlook the fact that every track name sounds like a cheesy romance novel, I find myself completely in awe of this record. Not just for how innovative it was for 1977, but also how that simple drum machine and those pure sawtooth arpeggios evoke such a feeling of excitement. As disco historian Peter Shapiro put it, Europop and Eurodisco were the relentlessly chipper, hyper-stylized music that reflected the boundless optimism of a European Union that would end all continental wars, the homogenized blandness of a culture run by bureaucrats, and the retreat into safety of a continent that was reeling from terrorist organizations like the Bader Meinhof Gang and the Red Brigade. In other words, all things that made Eurodisco completely unrelatable and unpalatable to American ears. Indeed, in the US, where dance bands still had the semblance of being bands, the idea of a single producer sculpting a record from a computer was not particularly popular. Americans wanted big brass sections and authentic singers who lived the lifestyles they preached. Euro disco bands like Silver Convention and Boney M were basically just hired dancers and singers, with a single producer running the show behind the scenes. And often pocketing all the money. By the early 80s, the two sides of the Atlantic had grown so divergent that American music writers had to convey their shock when they realized disco was still popular across the pond. Like this article in Billboard, which introduces readers to surface noise from Britain. 
Falco from Austria. And, of course, a little-known Dutch singer named Vanessa. Okay, guys, just a quick reminder that you are watching Band Splaining. Like, subscribe, yada yada, you know the drill. And if you've been with us for a while, maybe it's time you check out the Patreon. I think it's pretty well stocked. There's videos and stories that haven't been posted anywhere else. Honestly, it helps us out a lot since some of our videos have been getting demonetized. It, it's a whole other story. Okay. Ik ben geboren op 25 juli 1951 op de Frankenboskade, nummer 92 in Den Haag. In 1981, 30 year old Connie Whitman was newly married with an adopted daughter and looking to move on from her modeling career. Several years earlier, she had put out a record singing in Dutch, which flopped. But Connie, now older and wiser, thought she'd try it again, this time using her modeling alias, Vanessa. The first step was finding a producer to write her first single. While In the Heat of the Night didn't exactly capture lightning in a bottle, it did showcase her patented ghostly vocals over a bass line clearly inspired by French disco legend Cerrone. In the Heat of the Night also put Vanessa on the map, at least within the Netherlands. Granted, articles like this one seemed a lot more interested in the nude photos she once took during her modeling days. Not to mention the five years suddenly removed from her age. But in a few short months, it wouldn't matter. Because very soon, Vanessa would be a superstar. I'm what you think I am, but here I go again, whatever you may think about. In 1982, Vanessa's first full-length album titled My First Album, had dropped, with Upside Down as the flagship single. Within a few weeks, it had hit number two on the Dutch charts. Vanessa was on TV. She was offered lead roles in major Dutch movies. She had more interviewers asking about the nude photos. That's kind of annoying. She had fans blowing up her phone line and begging for a lock of her hair. You have allemaal photos van Vanessa in your slaapkamer hangen. And yet, across the pond, radio silence. No TV appearances, no interviews, not even a write-up in Dance Music Report. Throughout the entire year of 1982, Billboard mentions her name a mere two times, both only in passing. And here's the thing. Vanessa sang in English. The music video was shot in an LA-based Gold's Gym. For the album insert, she models with a hot rod wearing Daisy Dukes. It sure seems like Vanessa was trying to break the US market. And yet, the single was never even released in North America. Listening to the rest of the album, I kind of see why. There's the flamboyant, musical soundtrack-esque Cheerio. There's the ultra-innocent bubblegum pop of Gimme Love. Or Yummy Yummy. When you look at the tracks that topped the U.S. dance chart in 1982, they were a bit edgier. They were darker and had a lot more funk. The quote from Peter Shapiro echoes in my mind. There was simply no room for the relentlessly chipper, homogenized ball of pink energy that was Vanessa. Vanessa followed up her record with a few more singles, including 1983's Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus take my magic she even briefly experimented with a totally uncharacteristic rock sound. You really gotta get rich quick, bitch. But the same level of success would never be repeated. 
To Vanessa's credit, it didn't seem to bother her. Thuis normaal als een normale vrouw yeah. en een moeder. En als ik op de bühne sta, dan probeer ik een, een superster uit te beelden. Dat probeer ik dan. I would never hang out with celebrities on my day off. She told the Dutch music press at the height of her fame. I would prefer to sit on the couch with the kids. I prefer the housewife life over a celebrity lifestyle. Because it's nothing more than a bubble. And later, when I'm not the center of attention anymore, it will burst. And if the bubble bursts, I would still have my family. Honestly, Vanessa may be the most well-adjusted pop star who ever lived. And perhaps this is the reason she could never make it in the U.S. Vanessa gradually left the music business, becoming a successful beauty entrepreneur instead. She is now a popular influencer who, at the age of 72, appears to have rewritten the laws of aging as we know them. To Vanessa, I say thank you for your voice and your unabashed positivity. All right, until next time.